This is worksheet number five in the gas laws packet. And in this worksheet, I will introduce the second of the three gas laws that we are going to learn. So we've already learned about Boyle's law, which told us the relationship between pressure and volume when temperature was kept constant. Charles' law is similar. Uh, Charles' law applies when uh, pressure is held constant, and it tells us that volume and temperature are directly proportional. In other words, when temperature increases, so does the volume, or when temperature decreases, <clears throat> so does the volume. Uh, so they move in the same direction, right? And just like with Boyle's Law, we have a general equation that tells us the relationship between the starting and ending volume and also the starting and ending temperature. And so if you look at your gas laws cheat sheet near the periodic reference sheets in the front of this packet, uh, you will find this equation solved for each of the variables V1, T2, V2, and T1. Uh, one thing to be careful of since you've gotten used to Boyle's Law um, is you really need to watch the subscripts here because in this one we've got V1 and T2 paired together and V2 and T1 paired together, which is a little bit different from the order of the subscripts in Boyle's Law. So some people, out of habit, uh, make some mistakes when they get to this law. So just keep an eye on those subscripts. Um, the other thing, this is the place where people will mess up and nearly every single one of you will do this on your first homework assignment in this law. Anytime we enter a temperature into an equation, which we will do twice in Charles' Law, it must be in Kelvin. So I want you to write this down right now. Temperature must be in Kelvin. Even if the problem is asking you what is the final temperature in degrees Celsius, when you plug information into the formula, temperatures must be in Kelvin. The formula was designed and it only works when temperatures are in Kelvin. If you plug in a temperature in Celsius, you will get the wrong answer. Alright? So, the good news is, it's not hard to convert Kel uh, Celsius into Kelvin. You just add 273 to the Celsius temperature. So we can practice, right? 25 degrees Celsius. If we want it in Kelvin, all we do is 25 plus 273. And if you're following along with me, you get 298 Kelvin. Remember, we don't put a degrees sign on Kelvin. We read about that in worksheet one. Um, or, if we want to go the other direction, right? If we're told we have 332 Kelvin, like, let's say you solve an equation for T2, and you get the answer, right? Well, since you put information in in Kelvin, you're getting it out in Kelvin. So if you solve this equation for T1 or T2, when you get the answer for temperature, it's in Kelvin. Right, so let's say you solve your problem and you get that your answer is 332 Kelvin. But the problem asked you to put your final answer in Celsius. Well, you're going to have to convert back to Celsius. So you just do the opposite. You take that 332 and you subtract 273. So if you're following along with your calculator, right, that's going to give you 59 degrees Celsius. But you cannot forget that when you put a number into the formula for temperature, it's got to be in Celsius. And that will inevitably be a problem for some of you. So pay attention to that. All right, we're going to do two example problems, and you'll do the rest when you get to class. All right, these are going to work really similarly to how the Boyle's Law worksheets work, just a different set of equations. So you'll need to be able to refer back to your gas laws cheat sheet at the front of the packet. Okay, the sample of gas has a volume of 55.8 milliliters at 25 degrees Celsius. Look at, when you're doing Charles' Law, you know you're going to have to put information about temperature into the equation. 
right? So the first thing I want you to do as soon as you write down that 25 is add 273 to it. We've already got you set up to do that. That means it's 298 that's really going into the formula. Look at, this sounds silly, but it will save you headaches later having to recalculate. As soon as you've converted, put a big X through that 25 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, I guarantee at some point it's going to sneak into your equation. All right, and 760 torr is my pressure. Okay, uh, what volume, so we're solving for V2, would this gas sample occupy at STP? Okay, so remember, STP, that's telling you something about T2 and P2. Okay, standard temperature in degrees Celsius is zero. We convert that to Kelvin, well, standard temperature in Kelvin is 273. Okay, standard pressure. Since we're in torr, well, it's 760 torr. Not shockingly, we've got a constant pressure here. Good, because otherwise our Charles Law equations wouldn't work, right? They only work when pressure is constant. So if we look at our gas laws sheet sheet, we want to solve for V2, so we got to go over to the upper right corner of our gas laws cheat sheet and see that V2 is equal to V1 times T2 divided by T1. Be very careful, a lot of people switch these, right? You think, oh, V1 times T1, I'll have both of my one subscripts on the top. Nope, not in this case. All right, so watch those subscripts carefully. So then we just plug in our numbers. 55.8 times 273 divided by 298. Okay, so 55.8 times 273. Then I divide by 298, making sure I got the correct order of operations. And I'm going to round, I get 51.12 uh, milliliters. Okay, so this makes sense because my temperatures have gone down. So according to Charles, I should see my volumes also go down. And indeed, the volume has gone down. That's my final answer. I'm going to box it. All right, example two. The gas has a volume of 25 liters at 100 degrees Celsius, so that would be 373 Kelvin. Cross that out right away. What volume would this gas occupy? Okay, so I want to know V2. At 200 degrees Celsius, so that's 473 Kelvin. I'm going to cross out the Celsius. Assuming pressure remains constant at 760 torr. So P1 and P2 are 760 torr. I'm solving for V2 again, so I'm going to use the same equation as I did above. So 25 times my T2, 73 divided by my T1, 373. Right. So 25 times oops, 473 divided by 373 gives me 31.70, and my units are liters. And let's see, that makes sense because my temperature has increased, and so my volume should also increase, and indeed I see that it has. So there is my final answer. So we will finish this worksheet and go on to the next one, uh, worksheet six, which is also more practice with Charles Law when you get to class next. And the main thing you're gonna need to watch out for is just to remember that you always have to convert your temperatures into Kelvin before you put them into the equation.